a while ago I bought this coax indicator from Shars and as you can see it has not been used all that much and it has started skipping. I don't know if I can get it to do it now. Yeah, see, see the, di the dial pause there. It's moving. It skips. So there's something broken inside here. Something slipping inside. What happened was I ran this under power and I had it going at maybe 600 RPM and it says the max is 800 on the website but it was making a pretty large swing and I think it just got too much momentum and it stripped out something inside or loosened something up. So I'm going to try to figure out how to take this thing apart. Like I said before, it was pretty accurate. You can see it's got a little wobble to it when you spin the needle wobbles a little bit. If it was perfect, that should stay perfectly still. But it was close enough for what I wanted. Another slight odd thing about it is if you use one of these and you tighten it down, if you can see, but this has a hook off to the left so the flat doesn't line up with the curve of the little thingy, which that doesn't really affect anything as far as performance goes, but it's a sign of the quality. So anyways, I'm going to try to figure out how the heck this thing comes apart and then yeah, see if I can figure out what's wrong inside. And there. Okay, so that comes out. Does it come all the way? Now there's this plunger here, and that's what moves the dial. You can see that plunger doesn't consistently move the dial. It's like it's hung up. So i to take it apart even further. Might have to go in through the dial. Made it in a step further. I wasn't able to get the hand off. I tried prying here, but it's pretty well stuck on that, that pin. So I was able to sneak this up and by the hand. The hand got a little bit bent. A little swoop up, but that should straighten back out again. Hopefully. So when the rack moves back and forth, it turns this gear here. But as you can see, this gear here isn't directly attached to this other one. There's just a, a rod that sticks out and it pushes on that pin. And to keep all the backlash out of the system, there's a spring. So it's always pushing in one direction. So if this, if it's, if this gear skips teeth, you'll lose tension on this spring and it won't have enough spring tension to get back to where it's supposed to be to read. So I'm going to try just tightening up the spring tension here and putting it back together again and it will hopefully work. There's a rack here that runs spring loaded. Here we have the actual indicator mechanism. That was rather difficult getting this thing back together again. You have to wind up the spring and see it's not quite zeroed but that's close enough for me. I've taken it apart a few times. This is the best I've gotten it. If you put too many turns on this needle it overpowers the other spring and if you don't put enough on then it doesn't return. So the problem I was having before was after you moved it a bunch it would not return, wouldn't spring nicely. So now it uh, returns at when it's pulled all the way. Because when you pull it all the way, you're actually compressing one spring and relaxing the spring that winds up this needle. So, anyways, so when you're here, the spring is actually at the loosest. So when you And when it's in this area, it didn't have enough spring tension to move that needle. So I'm going to try to get this thing back together again the rest of the way. And hopefully I now have, again, a working coax indicator. So if you take one of these apart, there's a little pin that sticks out of that dial that lets it rotate with the outer face. And also these numbers seem like they smudge super easy. 
so this little graduation so yeah if you care about that sort of thing be careful so there it is all back together again and working so overall uh, the build quality inside wasn't terrible I mean for 60 bucks I think this thing is a deal I just wouldn't run it under power I think you can damage it that gear skips and those screws around in here if they loosen up they can move the the little pinion away from the rack and then make it skip so so yeah I'd run it at really slow speed or just by hand at least that's what I'm gonna do from now on uh, your mileage may vary but hope I'll have to give this a try actually on the mill and see if it seems like it's actually working I hope you liked this video. If you did, I'd hope you'd consider subscribing. I've got a virtually endless supply of projects I could make videos about. If there's something I can do better, or if there's a type of video you'd like to see more of, leave a comment down below.